Casa Grande in the Hopi is called Nasabi. And the word Nasabi means the village in the middle of the valley. The southern Arizona desert is dotted with the remains of countless communities built by the prehistoric Hohokam people. The fragile multi-storied big house preserved at Casa Grande Ruins National Monument was the centerpiece of the largest Hohokam village in the Gila River Valley. Let's explore and let's see what's going on. All right, guys, this is Chris with Serving and Swerving, and we got to figure out what's going on. It looks like right there, we have the ancient people who used to live in the desert, the Native Americans, the indigenous people that were here in Arizona. Now, I'm driving from Phoenix to Tucson, and I stop whenever I see something cool, and there's a national monument here. Let's check it out. After a long battle with the desert, this ancient building still commands respect. Four stories high and 60 feet long with a platform mound filling the first floor. It is the largest known structure of the ancestral people of the Sonoran Desert. The early Spanish explorers named it well, Casa Grande, which means the Great House. And to them it was a mystery. Its walls faced the four cardinal points of the compass. A circular hole in the upper west wall aligns with the setting sun at the summer solstice. Other openings align with the sun and moon at specific times. Perhaps people would gather here to study how the positions of celestial objects related to times for planting, harvesting, and celebration. Who were these people who watched the sky with such purpose, or who were able to build a thriving civilization in the middle of the desert? Well, let's learn about those people. So whenever you first walk in, it's a museum, and it talks about like astrology, it talks about the different archaeological sites in Arizona, it shows where the Hokoram people actually lived at. Um, there were a lot of civilizations around here, but this was for sure the biggest one. And then they, they, they just up and disappeared too. So it's like a mystery. Why did they leave? Did they leave because their population got too big? Did they leave for, you know, a different reason? Maybe there was a war. Maybe there was a battle. But a lot of people actually relate their ancestors. Well, a lot of the native people say their ancestors actually came from these people. So these people were kind of the building blocks for different civilizations throughout Arizona. It was really cool to learn and, like I said, to see like all the sun gazing and looking at the stars and whatnot. Because it's like so many ancient civilizations had so much to do with the stars and where they aligned and what they meant. We lost that, like, uh, I don't know, I think we lost a lot whenever we started putting all these lights up and didn't see the stars as well. Because a lot of these ancient civilizations, they knew where the stars were. They had names for them. There's a reason for this. It wasn't just like, I don't know, just for fun and storytelling. There was a reason whenever the stars aligned. There was a reason with the solstices and whatnot. So anyway, so in the museum, it's actually going to show the food that they ate, the pottery that they made. Um, it's going to show a video on how they made the pottery. So you're going to learn a lot about a little. Um, there's actually like a touch place where you could actually feel the different um, artifacts that were there or some of the bones that were there. It shows like the Egyptian cotton, what these people planted, what they ate, shows different uh, predators they might have had. I mean, these people living in the valley, you have to understand the desert. The desert's hot, it's dry, but then there's spots where there's water coming from the ground. There's hillside plants. So these people used it all. You know, they built their houses out of clay and mud. They use the mountains during the valleys. They use those, the animals that live there. I mean, these guys were so resourceful. It gives us an appreciation for the past. And it talks about, like, before the walled compounds, it talks about how they built their houses. This is a great museum to actually put you right there with the people. I loved it. I learned a lot. I saw a lot of the things that they did. The Hohokam people were the first masters of the American desert. Their origins lay with hunter-gatherers who lived in Arizona for several thousand years, but they drew also from the Mesoamerican civilization. By the year 300, the ancestral people lived in permanent settlements along the Salt and Gila rivers. To irrigate their fields, villages cooperated to build and manage vast canal systems that diverted water from the rivers. In areas without year-round streams, they tapped groundwater or diverted storm runoff. The ancestral people cooperated in trade, too. Villages sat along natural routes between today's California, 
the Great Plains, the Colorado Plateau, and northern Mexico. They traded mostly pottery and jewelry, and jewelry for a variety of items. Gulf of California shells were common. Macaws, mirrors, and copper bells show links to tropical Mexico, and so do the oval pits in a lot of these major villages. These pits may have been ball courts for games like the Aztecs played for gatherings. Related to identify an ancient house. The priest was the first European to see these ruins. He named the largest structure Casa Grande. The community at Casa Grande was home to about 2,000 people. Arizona's four Autumn tribes and two Pueblan tribes, the Hopi and the Zuni, traced their ancestors to the settlement at Casa Grande. Curious travelers stopped to collect souvenirs and carved their initials into its walls. It was a great video. You learned a lot. I love interactive stuff like this. Arizona does a great job of like, uh, like you know, making sure people know their past and making sure they recognize the Native Americans who called Arizona home. That's one of the reasons I love Arizona and New Mexico, because like I said, I'm from the Midwest, but it's like there's so many awesome Native American sites and places in the Southwest where I'm like, I love it. It brings back like the Wild West feel. I just love Arizona and New Mexico. But guys, be sure to take a tour. I missed the tour. But this tour guide, I talked to him for a little bit. He still gave me like a halfway tour. And, you know, you learn a lot about the desert farming. A lot of like the English settlers who came here actually used the same irrigation, like the canals and all the different networks that these, nat that these uh, native people made. Because they made such great like structures and whatnot. I mean, that the Casa Grande is made from like, in like the year 300 and it's still here. A lot of our modern day like construction and projects don't even last that long. It talks about the daily life within the walls. You could grab a brochure so you could like read a little bit about, about the people. Because nowadays, a lot of it gets lost. And you know what? We're not going to lose it. We're going to appreciate. We're going to honor our past. And we're going to check out the different buildings, the different places. So if you like exploring different spots, be sure to subscribe to the channel as I explore the main things to do. I have a lot of stuff to do in Arizona and all over the USA. But I plan on traveling all over the world, living about, learning about the prehistoric people, the prehistoric places, and uh, just different things going on. I also give bartending and serving advice. So if you'd like to be a bartender, I just travel the country like bartending at different destination locations. But yeah, it talks about like why build the Casa Grande. Because a lot of people thought like maybe like the emperor lived there or something. But no, it wasn't people. People didn't live there. About Like I said, about a mile away, it's behind like a Walmart now. These people were just digging and found out all these different uh, places where people lived. So this spot was like the centerpiece though. A lot of trade was here. A lot of rituals were here. It's Like I said, it's got 11 rooms, four stories high. And it all leads back to them watching like where the canals were. Or it also has like north, south, east, west. So it's watching the stars. It's watching their canals. Maybe it was used for a big business center. I guess this was like the downtown little spot. Well, thanks for checking out the video, guys. Look, I know I'm not like an archaeologist. I know I'm not a historian or even the brightest guy there is. I just like to talk a little bit about what I know. I don't know too much. Well, I'm learning, you know. But thanks, guys. Check it out. Casa Grande Ruins. If you guys are driving around, you know, wherever you're at, wherever you're from, if you're driving around and see a sign that says Scenic View or National Park, look, take the little time out, check it out, explore. You, might, you don't know what you're going to find. You might like what you see. Thanks, guys, and uh, follow along as I, you know, just explore the rest of the things to do. I was from Phoenix to Tucson, so I'm going to stop at, what's it called, Bisbee. I stopped at Tombstone. I did a lot to do in Arizona. Well, you know what? Because there's a lot to do in Arizona. Thanks, guys. Serving and swerving. Chris, holler at your boy.